What is criminology and what do criminologists do? Criminology is a discipline concerned with the scientific study of criminal behaviour. It emerged in Europe out of 18th and 19th century concerns with the treatment and punishment of criminals. The French physician and anthropologist Paul Topinard is credited with first using the term criminology in the 1870s. The word criminology first appeared in English in 1890. The new field of criminology was defined by a common problem, crime, rather than by a common approach to the topic or a common method of study. Criminology encompasses at least five main areas in relation to crime. First, the sociology of law, or how social conditions affect the way laws are made, unmade and enforced. Second, theories of what causes crime, sometimes known as criminogenesis. Third, research on how societies respond to crime, especially through formal institutions such as the police, the court system and the prison service. Fourth, penology, which is the study of the treatment and punishment of criminals. Fifth, victimology, which is the study of the nature and the needs of the victims of crime. Researchers from various backgrounds have pursued criminological research, including lawyers, doctors, statisticians, psychologists, psychiatrists and sociologists. Attempts to explain crime and deviance are generally framed in terms of the researcher's academic discipline, such as law, genetics, psychology, psychiatry, statistics or sociology. You can identify three broad disciplinary perspectives on the causes of criminal behaviour, the biological, the psychological and the sociological. It should be added though that there are often attempts at integrating the insights from these different theoretical perspectives. Biological approaches generally focus on genetic, constitutional or hereditary factors which might predispose some people toward crime. Psychological approaches generally focus on law breaking as a response to cognitive personality or mental health defects in individuals. Sociological approaches generally focus on the way that social factors affect the learning, motivation, opportunity and social support for crime, as well as questioning the definitions of crime and deviance which prevail in a society at a particular time. Today's sociologists make up a large proportion of the people working in criminology. The methods selected will depend on the research questions posed or the hypotheses to be tested. Research might have a quantitative focus on explaining differences or changes in crime rates, or it might have a more qualitative focus in understanding the situations and subjective experiences of accused criminals, victims of crime or people who work in the criminal justice system. One of the unique properties of crime is that it's generally hidden from public view. Qualitative research involving observational fieldwork can be particularly valuable in revealing otherwise unknown dimensions of criminal activity. Sociologists have developed a variety of criminological theories which are important in explaining the causes, nature and consequences of crime and deviance. They are also important in explaining how crime and deviance are understood by those involved and affected by them, and what kinds of social responses are set in train when deviance is identified. Such theories can also provide a basis for change in policy, law and practice in relation to crime and deviance. For example, understanding that male homosexual behaviour is not harmful between consenting adults has been central to the arguments for decriminalising that behaviour. Similarly, understanding how violence is more likely to occur between prisoners in overcrowded prison cells as opposed to cells with fewer prisoners can potentially lead to different policies on prison resourcing and accommodation. Some sociologists have been interested in developing very general theories that might explain most or all types of crime and deviance. There have been attempts, for example, to link rates of illegal activities to a society's general economic conditions. However, this has produced only inconsistent results, and many sociologists remain sceptical of this approach. They think it's like trying to develop a general theory of disease, when the concept of disease refers to a wide variety of specific bodily pathologies with different causes, trajectories and effects. The alternative is to be more concerned with developing middle range theories of specific types of crime or deviance. Middle range theories have an explanatory scope that lies between very abstract general theories about society and very specific theories which have only a limited or local application in explaining a particular case or incidence of deviance. Lawrence Cohen and Marcus Felsen, for example, developed a middle range theory of predatory property crime in the United States in the 1970s. They define this type of crime as involving direct physical contact between at least one offender and at least one person or object which that offender attempts to take or damage. Their study focused on the convergence of three elements in time and space for this type of crime to occur. 
a supply of motivated and capable criminal offenders, such as burglars, a supply of suitable targets, such as houses, and an absence of able guardians who could protect vulnerable properties. Cohen and Felsen found that the property crimes they studied were certainly carried out by people with criminal motives, but that the incidence of this crime also depended on the number of opportunities there were to rob people or burgle their homes. They found that the number of burglaries varied from one community to another. This was influenced by the degree to which local residents watched over houses in their neighbourhood or took other crime control steps. Cohen and Felsen also highlighted the way that criminal opportunities for this type of crime had increased in the United States in preceding decades. This was because more single parents and couples in families were being employed during the day. It underpinned initiatives like Neighbourhood Watch and was the precursor to the more general concept of designing out crime, reducing criminal activity by re-engineering physical and social settings so that such activity is simply made either difficult or impossible. In summary, Crime is the main subject matter of criminology, where the causes of crime are studied from biological, psychological and sociological perspectives. Second, sociologists have sought to explain crime and deviance from the earliest days of the discipline by developing theories based on their empirical research. Third, these theories can also be used to improve policy, law and practice in these areas. Fourth, there are different kinds of sociological theories about crime and deviance, and no one theory explains everything about these topics. Fifth, there are both general theories of crime relating it to broad social developments and more general middle range theories which focus on the particular circumstances of criminal behaviour.